If you're a fan of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., then chances are you're also a fan of the inseparable duo that is Fitzsimmons. So inseparable that everyone watching, and even the characters on the show, originally thought they were one person. Fitzsimmons. Fitz. Simmons. Which is why they're together in this character focus. You can't talk about one without the other. These two characters have such a fun and unique dynamic that evolved over the show's seven season run. What we see in season seven is a long way from what we see in season one. So let's dive in and dissect this incredible dynamic that provided this show with some of its best moments. We have to start by looking back at their first appearance on the show. What makes my love for these characters so strong and unique is how much I did not like them when I first met them. They were just so stereotypical and stiff. Caricatures of nerdy scientists who quip about sciencey things and can barely carry their own body weight. They had the classic tidy look with neat clothes and neat hair. I couldn't help but cringe a little every time they talked. But then came episode 6, which managed to do something to me that no other TV show has ever managed to do. It made me emotional during a random episode in the first season of a show I was kind of eh about up to that point. I have never seen a show turn the corner harder than this show did. It was this episode that made me go, alright, now I got a show to watch. And it's all because of Fitzsimmons' story in this episode. As the episode goes, while investigating mysterious electrical anomalies, Simmons gets infected with an alien virus that has already killed three others, and they have to try and find a cure before it kills Simmons. And this begins a roller coaster of a will she, won't she die story. She's gonna die. No, she's gonna be fine. No, she's gonna die. Nope, they found a cure, she's gonna be fine. No, the cure doesn't work, she's gonna die. No, the cure does work, she's gonna be fine. Oh my god, she's gonna jump out of a plane and die. It's this back and forth that made it so effective. I actually wasn't sure if she was going to die or not. In most shows, if it's a random episode involving a main character, you can pretty much guarantee that they'll save the character at the last moment. But the difference here is that I wasn't sure if this was a main character yet. It was only episode 6, so I thought there was a chance they were actually going to kill Simmons. And the idea of her killing herself without knowing that there was a cure to save her is so heartbreaking. And it sells how hopeless Fitz and the audience feels in this moment. We really see how strong their relationship is, and how important they are to one another. Sure, we'd been told how close they are, but this really showed it. It's the first real showing of these characters, and actors Ian DeCastaker and Elizabeth Henstridge. They absolutely nailed the characters and emotions in this episode. It's like the creators of the show randomly decided to set them free, allowing them to start to become the characters we would come to know and love. And from here, the journey of these two really starts to take off. As the episodes progress, we begin to see these characters shaped by their experiences, eventually becoming unrecognizable from their early Season 1 counterparts. My personal favorite Fitzsimmons storyline is when Fitz is dealing with his brain trauma after his underwater sacrifice to save Simmons, where he also confessed his love for her. Ian DeCastaker is fantastic in portraying his ailment and his feeling of loneliness, which makes it all the more heartbreaking when it's revealed that Simmons was just a figment of his imagination. It shows how much she means to him. After all this pain and the back and forth of will they, won't they, it looks like these two will finally get together until the universe takes Simmons and puts her on another planet. We see the lengths Fitz is willing to go to to save Simmons, traveling to an alien planet to bring her back. Elizabeth and Ian both absolutely kill it in these episodes, showing the strain these events have on them and the toll it's taking on their relationship. And yet again, they persevere through it, only to be faced with their next giant obstacle, the framework and Dr. Fitz. This time, it's Simmons' turn to save Fitz and the rest of the gang, as she and Daisy voluntarily enter the framework to save their friends. And while there, Simmons can only watch in horror as Fitz commits unspeakable acts, unaware of his real self. She even gets shot by him, and almost killed, which I can only imagine is very traumatizing. As you know, they do escape the framework, and Fitz has to come to grips with everything he just did in the augmented reality. But of course, the hardship does not end there. Because next comes one of my favorite storylines, when Fitz is separated from the entire gang by a span of 74 years. And yet again, Fitz has no hesitation in traveling that distance, shipping himself off to the future to introduce the world to the most badass character on the show in my opinion. Future Fitz is the culmination of everything that had come before. In an older video of mine, I brought up the idea of dormant traits versus learned traits. 
and the theory that every character on a long-running show will portray one or both of these. Dormant traits are the traits that are hidden underneath the surface of characters at first, and are brought out over time through the story and character interactions. Learned traits are just as they sound, traits that a character does not previously have, instead developing them through the story and character interactions. Fitzsimmons go through a primarily learned traits arc. It's not like they were confident, cool, badass characters back in Season 1 and were just deciding not to be. No, they learned to become those cool, confident characters. They earned it. If halfway through Season 1, we got a representation of the Season 5 fits, I would have turned off my TV then and there. It's the trial by fire learning throughout four other seasons that made Future Fits my favorite character. Seeing him infiltrate and deceive the Kree hierarchy to save his friends felt like the culmination of everything that had come before. Remember, this was the guy that was afraid to be in the same room as a dead body. But by this point, Fitz had been through enough, and he wasn't going to take shit from anybody that was putting his friends in danger. Which made it all the more sad when he died. I mentioned in my last video that this is potentially the most heartbreaking scene in any Marvel TV show or movie. I'll be honest, it makes me cry every time without fail. I can't praise Ian DeCastiker enough for his performance. But he's not the only one putting on an incredible performance. Season 6 and 7 is where it's Simmons' turn to be the ultimate savior. Her unrelenting search for Fitz as she travels across the literal universe to save him. And the sacrifices she makes in Season 7, keeping her memory suppressed, not knowing what has happened to her beloved Fitz, but continuing her mission knowing it's the only way to save the timeline. And in the end, she successfully saves Fitz yet again, and the universe, as it's revealed that both Fitz and Simmons are the ultimate badass team players of the show, having invented time travel and risking their safety as well as the safety of their daughter to save humanity. God damn, these are awesome characters. Try to tell me that there was another character on this show that made more sacrifices and saved the team more than these two. They are the heart of this show, and their never-ending pursuit of love for each other is one of the main reasons this is one of my all-time favorite shows. Gay! And luckily, they got the happy ending they deserved, retiring to live their lives as happy parents to a daughter. It's an oversimplification of events, but yes. And now, I just want to ask Hollywood, what the f*** are you doing? It blows my mind that two actors of this caliber aren't appearing in more TV and movies. Elizabeth and Ian are truly gifted actors that deserve more roles. But until we get more content with them, we can always relive the glory that is the unbreakable Leopold Fitz and Gemma Simmons. Thanks for watching. As you heard Agent Wu astutely point out, this is a bit of an oversimplification of these characters. If you haven't seen the show in its entirety yet, don't take this as a replacement. You should absolutely watch these characters' journeys for yourself. And I just want to add, I'm having an absolute blast making these videos, and I can't wait to make more on a wide variety of subjects. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.